Hey everybody, today we are going to be talking about the MCU and the DCEU. That's a new word for me. I've just been calling it the DC movies. Stay tuned! When everybody hates it, we think it's okay. When everybody likes it, we gotta complain. We're quite contrary. Thank you, and welcome to Quite Contrary, where we share our opinion about your favorite things, whether you like it or not. I'm Zach Nanimus, and today we are doing another Quite Contrary focus group. Today's focus group, as I said before, is going to be about the MCU and the DCEU. However, for this format, uh, generally speaking, Johnny likes to ask me a question. Johnny's off camera today. He's not feeling well. Uh, Johnny likes to ask me a question that I'm not prepared for, and so all my answers are going to be off the cuff, and we're going to see if we can get some entertainment to your faces. So, Johnny, what is your question to do? What would be the perfect plan for the DCEU to overtake the MCU? Assassinate Stan Lee. Got it. <laughs> I have a feeling that the entire Marvel machine is actually fueled by Stan Lee's life force. So they just have to kill him. And it's, and it's all done. Those movies will actually be erased from uh, history. No one will remember them. And yeah, that's it. It's like time travel. Yes. Like the rules of time travel. Like the rules of time travel is as simple as killing a beloved comic book creator in his prime. If. Wait, in his prime? He's never made more movies. Uh, he's not making movies. He's making tons of movies. He's just making movies about this. <laughs> he's just, they're just making movies around him. Where are we going to shoot Black Panther? Where's Stan Lee? He's in Guam. I guess Wakanda's Saddle in Guam. Saddle up. For DC. To, uh, to overtake Marvel, all they have to do is wait. Uh, Marvel, Ma Marvel used to make uh, some of the best movies to see. Um, you know, they, ha they had emotion to them, and they had, uh, uh, the, the, the cinematic language was, ver uh, was very present. The rules of cinema uh, were used and experimented with. They got the best actors giving stellar performances, um, and, and some time and consideration were put into these projects. And now, Marvel movies, while they're still a lot of fun, while they're still a lot of fun, they're cookie cutter. Okay, um, there are just so many parallels that you can draw between uh, Doctor Strange, Spider-Man: Homecoming, you know, things like that. They feel they feel like one big movie, or better yet, they feel like we're playing a video game and we're just choosing different characters each time we want to play it. And if I was if I was gonna say uh, what's what's unique about Iron Man uh, is that uh, it had an attitude to it. Now they've all got an attitude to them. If I was going to say what's unique about Avengers, I would say that it is very much a story about a conflict between superheroes and everything else. The supervillain is actually secondary to it, you know? Um, and once we start getting past that point, we start to lose the things that makes Marvel unique or that made the individual movies unique. Um, where DC, is, in my mind, is kind of catching up. I really did like the Justice League. Now, well, the reason that I say all DC uh, has to do is wait is that I think eventually we're going to start to not be interested in seeing the same trick from Marvel over and over and over again. I think people are going to catch wise. The other thing that's going to happen is that um, not too long from now, Robert Downey Jr. is going to retire. And Robert, don't make no bones about this. The Marvel Cinematic Universe has been built on Robert Downey Jr.'s back. You know, they took a chance making the Iron Man movie. Iron Man was not a crazy popular character when the Iron Man movie came out. A lot of, not a lot of people recognize that. Stuff started to turn around for the character Iron Man in a comic book that was called Ultimate Avengers. Um, and, it w and that was a story where they took a lot of unpopular characters and said, you know what, do whatever you want. Kill people off, you know, make it sort of a grim story. Um, and do, do whatever you think would be impossible to do in a movie. And it was a hit because, you know, they, they were as grandiose as they wanted to be. They took time with the story, blah, 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 blah. Things turn around for Iron Man. They take a, they take a gamble on a Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man. He's this new attitude superhero. And it was a hit because it was a good movie. You know, um, and now we love to see Robert Downey Jr. do his thing because he's a great performer. And soon we're going to lose that, you know, and uh, we're going to be left with, uh, with, with, don't get me wrong, a lot of talented people. 
but Robert Downey Jr. is always the star, you know? Um, I think that they have an opportunity to kind of replace him with a crisp rat. But um, I think that uh, you can't put the Guardians of the Galaxy in absolutely every story. And unfortunately, he has been pigeonholed in that way, where you can put Iron Man anywhere, but you can't put Star-Lord absolutely everywhere. Um, so I think that when it comes time, we, we're coming up to the end of the story that every Marvel movie has been moving towards. We're, we're, we're going to get to the end of that, and then um, Marvel is going to say, hey, we'd like to make more money. Let's completely start rebuilding the story, and I think that there's going to be just some fatigue just some absolute fatigue, where DC, in a lot of ways, is just getting started. You know, we, we don't have a Flash movie yet. We don't have an Aquaman movie yet. We don't have a Cyborg movie yet. And there's so much potential for them to grow in that way. Also, some of the creative team from the Marvel Cinematic Universe is starting to transition over. I think that we're going to see, a, I think we're going to see a partial migration as, you know, the Marvel movies start to, you know, really crystallize what they're going to be. We end this story. People are going to start to think about, you know, um, pe people are just going to be looking for work, to be honest. And so I think that, the, in a weird way, the DC Extended Universe is going to become the Marvel Cinematic Universe uh, as soon as this story ends, as soon as we get to Infinity War Part Two. Um, so that, that, that's, that's my two shakes on it. That's my two cents. That's my bee's knees, Johnny. Good job. Thank you. Uh, anything else? There's like fries with that. No, okay. no, that'll, that'll do it. All right. Uh, well, thanks for hanging out to the very end, everybody. Um, I want to mention that this is actually a fan-funded page. So if you're curious, we actually fund through Patreon. If you'd like to see what we do for our patrons, there will be links down in the description. If you want to see more videos, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. But while you're here, you can also check out these glorious little links. Do you see them yet? Do you see them? Well, I'm going to watch. There's one. There's one. I have to go change. Excuse me. The old I crapped a link joke. Classic comedy.